good to get the blood pumping, right? <coughs> uh, sorry, this place is a friggin' dust bowl. I mean, I'm all about the dead city. I am a necromancer, after all. But the sand, God. Hey guys, welcome to ESO Vault. Now that I'm through with this godforsaken place, we can get on with today's video. I've got a one-bar necro for you. The Dragon Cult Necromancer is a heavy attack build that uses a lightning staff like most heavy attack setups. This is similar in many ways to a lot of heavy attack builds, but it's different in the way it procs off balance. For that, I'm going to reach into my class skills kit, and in doing so, I'm going to come out with a build that's stupidly easy to run. If this isn't the easiest necro around, it's got to be damn close. Alright, now with a little assistance from Ember, I'll get into the build. Am I in trouble? Sorry, I just always assume. Never mind. My necromancer is a Nord, and that's just because when I rolled him, that's what I wanted to play. If you're rolling a character from scratch, I encourage you to play whatever you want to play. If you want to get fancy about it, ask yourself whether you want to play a Magicka or a Stamina character, and choose a race which has bonuses that fit the one you picked. And you're probably thinking, well, what's this build? And the answer is, it's whatever you want it to be. And I'm not trying to be difficult here, but now that the game allows hybrid setups, it's really up to you. But I'll answer your question. It's a Magicka Necromancer that's specced into stamina. Confused? Don't be. The game scales damage to whichever stat is highest. So then it becomes a question of sustain. Can the build function without running out of resources? Well, on a Lightning Staff heavy attack build, it's unlikely that I'll run out of Magicka because every heavy attack restores Magicka. So, I like to spec into stamina. Why? Because that's what I use for running, blocking, dodge rolling, and breaking free. If I can't do those things in a fight because I'm out of stamina, I can get dead in a hurry. Okay, there's one more thing to know here. Whichever stat you choose to spec into, your glyphs on your armor and your food buff should also boost that stat. Now I'm going to confuse you even more when I tell you that my food buff is Bewitched Sugar Skulls, and that boosts all three stats. The reason for that is that I don't need any recovery in my food buff, so I can just go for max stats. Alright, my Mundus Stone is a thief, which boosts my critical strike chance. A lot of people will tell you to take the lever for more penetration, but the first thing that happens when you join a group for a dungeon is you get a bunch of free penetration. That's right, because the tank is going to provide it but they can't give you any more crit. What you came in with is what you got. Take the thief for more critical chance. All right now, let's look at the top of the character sheet. On the left you see that I have all my points in stamina and that gives me 28,000 points of stamina. Health is right behind at a stout 27,000 points and that's the great thing about heavy attack builds. They allow me to do good damage and still have survivability at the same time. Weapon damage is at 4,200 and crit chance is at 45%, and that's pretty typical on a heavy attack setup. Looking at the recovery numbers, these are low, but the build doesn't need any more than that. Heavy attacks restore resources, Magicka in this case. Penetration is low, and I already said my piece on that, but I'll revisit it one more time in a little bit. Okay, I'm going to look at the skills, which are the most important thing. I'll go through these in the order of the rotation. First I summon the Skeletal Archer, which does good damage over time. Don't try this in a city. This is a criminal act like just about everything in the Necromancer Toolkit. For my next crime, I'll send a Blast Bones at the target. This explosive skeleton is the bread and butter of any Necromancer build. Now I let off with those two skills because they don't draw any aggro on anything until they hit. Next I'll use Elemental Susceptibility from the Destruction Staff skill line and this causes the target to be affected by the three elemental status effects every seven seconds while also reducing the armor of the target with Major Breach. What are the three elemental status effects? Burning, Chilled, and Concussed. Fire, Cold, and Electricity. These status effects do a small amount of damage while they last. Now I'll use the Ruinous Scythe from the Necro class skills. The Scythe does bleed damage and causes the hemorrhaging status effect. More importantly, it's what I use to set the target off balance in this build. No fooling around trying to lay down wall of elements in the right place. I just slap the target with the Scythe. Now this does mean I'll have to stay near my target the majority of the time unless I'm in a group and somebody else is applying off balance. But the Scythe is a fast and 100% surefire way to get off balance. 
Off balance causes heavy attacks to do 70% more damage. As an added bonus, the scythe heals me as well. And that heal is increased with every target that's in its cone. You'll notice I don't have a burst heal slotted. If you're in for a tough fight and you want to slot one, remove the next skill and put it there. I did in the fight at the end of the video. The next skill is Detonating Siphon. Now some of you may be thinking, I thought you didn't like the Siphon. No, I don't because it makes positioning awkward. Here it's slotted for a passive boost to critical chance on low health targets. I don't use it. Because I have 4 abilities from the Greyboard skill line slotted, I get a 16% increase to my crit chance when targets go below 25% health. I tried slotting a Fighter's Guild skill here for a passive boost to weapon damage and oddly enough it didn't perform as well. My last and final skill is the Glacial Colossus. The Colossus smashes the ground doing damage and causes anything in the area to take extra damage from major vulnerability. And that helps the whole group because it will increase everyone's damage, not just mine. After my skills are up and running, the rotation is easy. I'm going to hold down my heavy attack button and alternate between Blast Bones and the Scythe. I'll queue up those attacks by pressing the button while I'm holding down the heavy attack button. When the heavy attack finishes, the skill I queued up will fire. I can only queue up one skill at a time, so it's one per heavy attack. In theory, I'm supposed to be able to queue up a Blast Bones with every heavy attack, but that just doesn't work for me. It takes the Blast Bones two and a half seconds just to pick itself up off the ground. Then it has to reach its target. Then it has to stand there thinking for a minute until it decides to explode. I wonder what the Blast Bones is thinking during that time that seems like an eternity where it just stands there. Well, anyway, that's why I alternate between Blast Bones and the Scythe. I queue up my Skeletal Archer and Elemental Susceptibility the same way, but never when I'm supposed to use Blast Bones. I'll skip the Scythe when one of these skills needs to be refreshed. And because my 7 seconds of off balance is followed by a 15 second cooldown, odds are in my favor that I don't need off balance right then anyway. Okay, time for a quick fight. I gave No Meg Ryan the day off and came up with a different punching bag. I lead off the fight with the Archer, Blast Bones, and Elemental Susceptibility. Then I use the Sight. I use my ultimate and then I go into a Lightning Staff Heavy Attack and I try not to let off that button. From now on I queue Blast Bones, Sight, Blast Bones, Sight, alternating as long as the fight goes on. The first thing that expires is the Archer, so I queue him up. Now it's Elemental Susceptibility's turn. And it looks like the Brood Queen's reign has come to an end. I did it! What's this Wii stuff? Where were you? I didn't see you anywhere in that. Oh well. The bill did 40,000 points of damage per second. And I don't think I'm going out on a limb when I say that you can clear pretty much all the content in the game with that. You can see that 70% of the damage came from heavy attacks. If you play on PC and you have access to the combat metrics add-on, you may wonder what the colors are. Well, yellow is shock damage, orange is fire, white is physical, red is bleed, blue is frost, and green is poison. For whatever it's worth. Up in the pink numbers, you can see that off balance was up 31% of the time, which is close to the maximum, so the scythe did its job. I'm sure you noticed that its heals were keeping me alive as well. I said I'd say one more thing about taking the Thief Mundus instead of the Lover. Here's a similar boss fight using the Lover, and I ran a lot of fights on different bosses to confirm that I wasn't wrong about this. Not that I was afraid that I was, but the mechanics of the game change periodically, and I wanted to verify that I wasn't giving you bad advice. The two different Mundus stones delivered the same results. Wait a minute, you said that the Lover Mundus was no good. No, that's not what I said. The Lover works fine until I get into a group. In the group environment, both setups will benefit equally from any additional penetration from the group. But it's possible to over-penetrate if I take the Lover. And that extra penetration above and beyond the resistance of whatever I'm fighting would be wasted. So I always opt for the Thief. Alright, that's enough of that. Let's look at gear. My weapon is a Lightning Staff of the Sergeant, and whenever I'm doing a heavy attack build, it's always Sergeant's Mail as the primary 5-piece set. 
It's far and away the best heavy attack set. The staff is in the precise trade and has a poison damage enchant because necros get a bonus to poison damage. Poison and fire are the enchants that do the most damage, by the way. My next set is Stormmaster, and that's usually my choice for the second set. Now, because I'm using the Scythe, I could have run something like Noble Duel of Silks here, but that would mean that there was no option to go ranged at all. Even though I'm using the Scythe, I have the option to back off and my sets still work. Noble Duelist needs me to stay within melee range to work. And Noble Duelist doesn't have a single line of crit, so I'm not too crazy about that. Speaking of crit, here are the slime cross shoulders for extra crit. You get those from a vendor in the Undaunted Enclave in your capital city. Don't try to go to the Enclave in another alliance. They won't sell you a damn thing. And here's the item that powers one bar heavy attack builds, and that's the Oaken Soul Ring. It gives me the Empower buff, which increases heavy attack damage 70%. All my jewelry is in the bloodthirsty trait, and to change traits on jewelry, you'll have to take up jewelry crafting. My other two pieces of jewelry are Sergeant's Mail, and that's because the set only comes in heavy armor, and I prefer to have medium on my body pieces for the medium armor bonuses to damage. It just so happens the Storm Master set comes in medium armor. So my body pieces are all medium, except for one heavy piece. Traits should be divines. I'm wearing a mishmash here. Alright, that's it for gear. Let's look at the champion points. Champion points are Fighting Finesse, Weapons Expert, Deadly Aim, and Thaumaturge. Well, that's all I've got for today's build, Dragon Cult. And I appreciate you coming along with me, Amber. Traveling with you is a good time. Better than sitting around reading books. If you guys want to see more stuff like this, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. After Ember and I take off, there's still a fashion show and a little fight clip at the end. Alright, thanks for watching. Have a great day and enjoy your adventures in Tamriel.